Benjamin Netanyahu used the simplest of visual aids to set out Iran's alleged progress towards a nuclear weapon. By next spring, at most, by next summer, at current enrichment rates, they will have finished the medium enrichment and move on to the final stage. While Iran again rejected claims it's trying to build a bomb, the five permanent members of the Security Council met to discuss the possible resumption of talks with Tehran. But the Israeli Prime Minister set a timetable for action. A red line should be drawn right here. Before Iran completes the second stage of nuclear enrichment necessary to make a bomb. By that rationale, the red line becomes a deadline for an attack on Iran between March and August next year. But that's probably eased tensions with the Obama administration because the deadline is now well beyond the presidential elections in November. While Mr Netanyahu was the headline act at the UN, the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, launched his bid for Palestine to be recognised as a non-member state. In our endeavour, we do not seek to delegitimise an existing state, that is Israel, but rather to assert the state that must be realised, that is Palestine. Mahmoud Abbas won't negotiate with Israel while it continues to build settlements on land originally earmarked for a Palestinian state. But pressing ahead with his UN bid will put at risk hundreds of millions of dollars in US aid and Israeli cooperation necessary to fund the Palestinian Authority. The more the Palestinians are led to believe that they can reach their goals without compromise, that they can reach their goals without doing it together with Israel, the longer it will take for them to come back to the negotiating table. When Mahmoud Abbas asked the UN for full statehood last year, he raised the hopes of millions of Palestinians. But inevitably, the move stalled in the Security Council, in the face of Israeli resistance and a threatened US veto. A year on, Palestinians have turned on their own government. And the hot-button issue now is economic reform and the high cost of living. A leading member of Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah faction, Bassem Walwil, runs the biggest flour mill in the Palestinian territories. He says the Israeli occupation is quashing much needed economic growth. The frustration is too much. People, there is no hope for peace, no hope for a state. There is no resources. We control nothing. The economic situation is going down, a tax is going up. There are a lot of things that, you know, make people crazy here, you know. Bassam Walwil says the Palestinian people have been promised prosperity for peace, but for their president, also known as Abu Mazen, that too has proved elusive. Abu Mazen is searching for hope, for the Palestinian hope. They are, he is searching for a venue, a venue to go. Because everything is closed, the Americans closed the door, the Arabians closed their door, the Israelis with this you know, extremist government, they closed everything. And yet this could prove to be just another false dawn. At Kalandia, just north of Jerusalem, each day Palestinian children throw rocks at Israeli soldiers, manning the checkpoint which separates them from their hoped-for capital. This is to send a message that we don't want this occupation army here in Palestine. Some are the grandchildren of Palestinians who fled Jerusalem when the Israeli army moved in more than 60 years ago. And here, hope is thin on the ground. After decades of occupation, many Palestinians simply can't believe in a future without checkpoints and soldiers. <laughs>